You know, for somebody who hates the wind, I sure picked the wrong freaking state to move to. Anyway, welcome to Shift Heads. Today, changing the power steering pump on the excursion. Uh, I've got the new pump over here. Already got the old pump out because I started rocking and rolling before I figured I could make a video out of this. But uh, old pump is out, trying to do this as cleanly as possible, but the wind is being really a pain in my neck right now, blowing fluid all over the place. So hopefully I can get everything cleaned up, but uh, it's just driving me nuts today. We got the old pump here and the new pump there. The, the new pumps, the pulley is just a tiny bit different, but it shouldn't make any problems because the ribs are all the same. The width is the same. It's just, it, this one's got more spokes than that one. And it's not really, it's, it's a weird shaft, I guess, because this shaft seems to be longer than this one. But I'm not too worried about it. Uh, if I get it on and it doesn't fit, I still got the old pump. I could throw it back on, I guess. Um, the only reason I'm changing this out is when the truck's at a standstill and it's not moving, it's really difficult to turn the wheel. I know that may also be the steering box, but that's going to have to be another day. But for now, I got all brand new fluid, brand new hose clamp, all of that stuff. We'll get this changed out and be ready to go. Also another thing we're going to do today, I got these. These are sway bar bushings because if we come down here onto the passenger side, we see that but yeah it, it's it, yeah um so we'll get that done today too all right so new power steering pump is in it's working flawlessly which is fantastic so now we're gonna move on to the sway bar version um yeah i know i didn't really record a whole lot as far as the power steering pump is concerned but when i'm doing wet work such as coolant flushes power steering brake systems etc etc it's really difficult to film and protect my recording equipment. So I just kind of go through it and get it done and I just show you steps of things where I can and it was really messy under there. So I didn't film that. But uh, so yeah, let's move on to these sway bar bushings. And uh, these are all one solid piece. And I can tell the reason why this one on the passenger side failed. And if we go over to the driver's side, we'll see why. Pardon the wind. Okay. You see right here, there's this little spot where it's split. That's because somebody in the past didn't do this correctly. In order to install these sway bar bushings the right way, I've got to undo from the end links, take this whole sway bar down and run the new bushings from the ends into the spot to where they get bolted in. But you can see somebody took a shortcut and just cut right through here. And that actually causes it to prematurely wear out. So that's why that one failed. And yeah, we're not gonna do that on the new one. I, I can't get up. Ah, I'm like a turtle on its back. All right, so the sway bar is out and here's the old bushing that was on the driver's side. And you can see what I mean? That cut is not uniform at all. So they just spliced it right there and then wrapped it around and then stuck the sway bar back up in. But I'm gonna do this the proper way so that way these will last a little while. And as it turns out, I'm completely full of shit. These are the new ones and there is a split there. So, yeah, I guess I took it out unnecessarily. Oh well. Okay, so after much deliberation and much anger and really hard work and some redneck ingenuity using the, the, the uh, C-clamp there and the vice grips and the floor jack, I managed to get the new sway bar bushings in. Um, they're quite larger than the originals. And I mean, it's really screwed up, but you can see that it's not quite center in here, but I have a feeling that because of this plate right here, which is not factory, this is actually part of the aftermarket lift kit that somebody previous to me put on. Um, I don't think that these bushings are really in the right place as far as relation to the actual sway bar is. I mean, you can come over to the passenger side here and we can see that there's this gap right here. But hopefully over time they'll get in and they'll be all right. But eventually maybe a aftermarket sway bar for this may be in order. But uh, yeah, we got those in. 
shouldn't be banging and clunking while going down the road. Power steering pump's done. And therefore, I am done for the day. Would have been really nice to have a friend help me with this. Oh well. Oh yeah, another thing I did the other day, because I was bored and I really wanted something to do, um, and I did it off camera again, sorry. But some of you may remember this. <laughs> it goes up by itself <laughs> and it stays there and I'm tall so I can reach it. My wife struggles. Oh, and I almost forgot to tell you the tow mirrors are on too. Totally forgot about telling you guys that. So real quick before we go, power steering pump, I was not able to do this. Okay. It was really difficult to turn the wheel at an idle. You give it some gas and it made it go a lot easier. But the other thing we did, the sway bar bushings, every time you go over a bump and you hear a loud knock. And that was from that sway bar hitting that piece of metal. So now you don't hear it and it's lovely and I can turn the wheels nice and easy now, which is fantastic. Oh God. I love it when a plan comes together. But anyway, the next thing on the list is going to be that. That's coming out. That radio is going to go back into the Explorer. We've got a nice double din, full screen, touch screen, Android, Apple CarPlay app thing with the backup camera coming. Actually, it's already here. I just got to install it. That's going to be next. I thought I got rid of that noise. Well, that was a pretty sizable bump. Eventually, we'll get shocks on the thing too. But anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.